Do you know how to configure your system to expose your applications running in Kubernetes cluster to the outside world? Well, that question is fairly simple, but the answer might be a bit more complicated than you think. From the most simplistic perspective I can think of, we have two important components. We have an application and we have a user that is trying to access that application. But that access cannot be direct for a couple of reasons. First of all, we do not know what is the address, the IP of the application. And even if we would find out what the IP is, that might change over time. Now, why am I saying that? Well, we have a cluster. That application is running in a cluster and a cluster is a collection of servers. So that application, in a very simplistic way, I'm now imagining that we have only one replica of that application. So that application is in one of those servers. But at any moment, that application can be moved to some other server because we just made a new release, upgraded the application, or the server went down, or whatever the reason is. Applications are moving from one server to another. And when moving, they do not maintain their IPs because IPs are not fixed, they're not stable, they're temporary and they depend on where the application is running, how it is running, which pod or which replica we are accessing and so on and so forth. All in all, we cannot access the application directly because we do not know where it is or which IP it is serving on at any given moment and the IP might change. And that's why we need ingress controllers. Ingress Kubernetes ingress controller fixes or solves this problem. It helps us enable our users to access our applications from outside the cluster. So let's see how does Kubernetes ingress work. We're going to take a very quick detour from the main subject because I have to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Datree. It is a security tool that prevents misconfigurations in Kubernetes by enforcing a policy or a set of policies on your cluster. It comes with multiple built-in practices such as NSA, hardening guides, secret scanning, and EKS security best practices. And it offers native monitoring and CLI integration. Please go to datree.io to start your free trial to check out the tool. And at the same time, by checking them out, you will be supporting this channel. Thank you so much. Now let's go to the main subject. Let me deploy an application to a Kubernetes cluster and see whether we can access it. And if we can, let's see how all that happened, what are all the pieces involved, what's the process, and so on and so forth. So I will execute kubectl namespaces demo. I'm going to apply whatever is defined in the directory Kates. If needed, I will show you later what's in that directory. For now, I just want to run an application and to see whether my users can access it. And I will check whether it all works by sending a simple CURL request to the address to the domain of my application, which in this case is Nipayo, and you see that I got the response. It says this is a silly demo version 110. So my application running in some Kubernetes cluster somewhere is accessible from my laptop. So here's what's going on. I have a cluster that's a Kubernetes cluster that has any number of servers, any number of nodes. I have an external load balancer. External load balancer is extremely important because it gives me a stable IP. It gives me the address through which I can configure my domain knowing that that address, that IP will not change or likely not change anytime soon or ever. I have users, one user right now in this demo, but generally any number of users. And I have a number of applications running somewhere inside of that cluster. Now, when a user requests an application by going to the domain or the address of that application, like app.com, the request is sent from the DNS of that domain to the load balancer, external load balancer, something that is outside my cluster. And that load balancer knows how to forward requests 
to any of the healthy nodes of my cluster. Once that request enters the cluster, it goes to the proxy, to the ingress proxy, which in turn knows that that request should be forwarded to a specific application because there is a specific domain or path in the request itself, in the header of the request. And if that same user or some other user requests some other domain, let's say app2.com, then the process is almost the same. It goes to the external load balancer because that's stable, that has the same IP almost always. Load balancer forwards it to a healthy node of the cluster, whichever node or server is healthy, it goes to the proxy and proxy says, oh, the domain in the header is different, therefore I should forward it to a different application. Now, this is how it works from a very, very high level perspective. But what I'm interested in right now are the details. How does this really work? What are the technical details that made all that Happen. So let's start over with a bit more details. I have a Kubernetes cluster and in that cluster there is one or more applications running. But that's not all I have. I have many, many other things. But what matters here is what I will show from a terminal by executing qcuttl namespaces project contour get pods. Now in this case I already installed an ingress controller called contour. The same logic, the same principles are equally valid no matter which ingress controller you choose. It can be Nginx or traffic or anything else. Now, Contour specifically has pods that are related to Envoy. That's the proxy itself. That's the thing that will receive those requests, which I will show in a diagram in a second. And it has Contour Contour pods, which are a way, that's an ingress controller itself that is making sure that Envoy, the proxy itself, is always configured with all the information it needs. And finally, I have the gateway, which we'll keep for later. For now, ignore it. But let's see what else did I get with my ingress controller. I will execute QCuttle namespaces project contour, and I'm going to retrieve all the services. And over there, we have two services. The one that matters is the one called Envoy in this case, and it matters because the type of the service is load balancer. What that means is that the service itself, the construct in Kubernetes, part of Ingress controller that I installed in Kubernetes, will go to my service provider, to my cloud uh, computing provider, and create external load balancer and configure that load balancer to forward requests to a specific port on a specific, not on a specific, on any healthy node of the cluster. So Ingress that I installed in my cluster created external load balancer and configured it. Now when application is concerned, I apply quite a few resources, so actually not quite a few, a few only. And the first one we're going to take a look at is Ingress YAML. This resource, Ingress, Ingress resource is not directly related with any specific ingress controller, the proxy itself. So apart from saying I want ingress, I had to specify the ingress class name, which in this case says, hey, I want you to use contour. And I want you to forward request coming to ingress, wherever that ingress is, uh, and forward them only if they are associated with a specific host, with a specific domain, which in this case is silly dash demo, etc, etc, etc. And if a request comes into the proxy on that domain, with that domain in the header, I want you to apply specific rules, meaning that I want you to forward that request to a backend service called silly demo on port. 8080. Now this ingress, which is part of the definition of my application, is not creating any physical entity, anything except creating a registry in Kubernetes saying, hey, somebody wants to reconfigure ingress controller, the proxy itself, with this information. Next, I created a service. And we can see the service with cut gates service YAML. And the service is a way within Kubernetes to enable communication between different uh, pods, different services. And in this case, I'm saying, hey, there is a service called silly demo, and that service 
should be cluster IP, meaning accessible only from within the cluster. And I want you to do two things. First of all, to enable communication to port 8080. And second, to use this selector, this label in this case, to deduce that whenever somebody sends a request to this service, that request should go to the pods with that label. And finally, the last uh, manifest that I applied for my application is the deployment YAML. And deployment is a way in Kubernetes how to manage pods. Pods are where containers are running. Uh, I will not go into details about the deployment itself. What matters here is that it will create pods, any number of pods of replicas of my application with specific labels, same labels as those configured in the service and based on specific image which contains the application itself. And if I list all the pods with kubectl namespace demo get pods, we can see that in this case I have one pod, but I could have any number of pods, any number of replicas. Uh, for the sake of drawing nice things on a screen, let's say that I have three pods, three replicas instead of one. And now comes the user, the person wanting to use my application. What is happening? with the request that that user sends on a specific domain. Well, that request goes to the external load balancer, again, because that's the stable IP, that IP of that balancer is probably never going to change, so we know what it is, while the servers of the cluster are going up and down all the time, getting destroyed, upgraded, and applications inside of that cluster are moving around as well. Now, external load balancer forwards that request to a specific port on any of the healthy nodes of my cluster. Now that service was a service created by Ingress controller itself and that's probably the only service made to be exposed to the outside world. That's the only service that opened the port on servers of my cluster and as a matter of fact it opened ports on all the servers of the cluster so that load balancer doesn't have a hard time finding where to forward the request. From there on, that service forwards the request further to the proxy itself, to the pods of the proxy, because proxy is yet another application, and that proxy evaluates the request, finds usually, typically, through the domain, through the host, in the header, whether that request should be forwarded to this application or that application. Once it finds out the information it needs, it forwards it further to the service associated with a specific application, meaning specific pods of the specific application. When the service itself says, okay, I'm going to forward this request to that pod. Typically, or by default at least, it does round robin and equally forwards requests to all the pods of the, of the service of the application. So that's about it. That's how Ingress works. And now you know the whole process you might have used Ingress in the past, but you were not aware of the life cycle of a request, how it goes uh, from the beginning, from a request made by a user until it reaches a pod of your application. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.